Very different scenario that we are facing now compared to perhaps this time last year and uh, certainly the wrap up with the two previous speakers you've had next to no water you've had high grain and high pay, high pay prices if you're a dairy farmer it's been a tough time but I think things are um, changing and if you can see that we've got the tunnel and that light is getting better and brighter and it will actually change over time um, and I'm going to go through a few things that relate to the, those two key commodities grain and hay and how they are changing and um, what might happen down the track firstly uh, the rains that we've had so far this year um, massive rains down the New South Wales and Queensland coasts, putting out all the fires, um, filling the tiny reservoirs that do occur in those parts of the world, not quite getting into the Darling catchment out west that you'd like to fill those Menindee lakes, like we were talking. But the rains that are coming this weekend, some cracking rains in central Queensland, really impressive. You, talking 15 to, oh, sorry, 50 to 100 mil up there. Um, I think it might just clip the edge of the uh, Darling catchment, but it's, as you were saying, I don't think it's gonna really mean a, a massive amount for the Menindee Lakes. But um, it's an encouraging sign. It certainly shows that um, the, the, the climate impacts are breaking down and we're returning back to normal wet rainy conditions in Queensland so why can't we have some of that down here I'm going to give you a bit of a talk about what's happening in grain prices and where they might go what's making hay prices move around and where they might go and maybe some tips on buying grain and hay if you are on that end of the world many of you are probably on the selling end of the world can I just have a show of hands dairy farmers in the room Thank you. And on the other end of the game, cropping. Thank you. Always a bit of a mix in the Krang area. Um, Australian um, crop forecasters have been good enough to lend me this graph of wheat production in Australia over the last 20 years. By state, yellow being those sandy people over in Western Australia, and uh, Victoria being the purple ones here it's been a choppy ride the last two years well below the average production um, but importantly last year 60% of Australian wheat was grown in Western Australia and so a hell of a lot of grain had to come right around the coast and be transshipped into Victoria New South Wales and Queensland to keep all our livestock industries alive this year it's been a reverse. 60% of the wheat was grown in the eastern states. Still not flash production, but it meant that we are a little bit more self-reliant here on the east coast and less grain was coming around from Western Australia. So that meant that the grain prices didn't need to have as much freight as they were the year before. So grain prices have been a bit cheaper during 2019. Uh, onto some pricing, um, and these are prices that I've tracked over the last, what have we got here, 10 years. The blue line here is wheat price delivered to Geelong. Um, the red line is the Chicago wheat futures expressed as Australian dollars per tonne. And the green line here is the difference. So, two things to take home from this graph. One is Generally speaking, when the US wheat prices change, so do Australian wheat prices. So we can't sell too much more, we can't be out of whack too much with what's happening in the US. But the big changes, of course, have been recently when we've got massive droughts, we do not want to export anything. We need every grain we can get 
to keep our livestock industries going and our flour mills. And so we are way out of whack with what's been happening with the US. But as you can see, over the last 18 months, relatively speaking, we are getting cheaper and cheaper. And we are becoming more export competitive over the last 18 months. And we are now at a point, these are Victorian prices, we are now at a point we are within the zone of where we might actually start exporting again. So that means that it is unlikely to expect the grain prices to collapse much more than they have because we are already so close to being export competitive. If we fall another 20 or 30 dollars a ton, the grain traders will come in and they'll start they'll start exporting again and will be competitive. So don't expect prices to fall too much, but um, but uh, it, we have a, a quite a strong floor in that market now. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that um, the grain markets and hay markets for that matter have been operating an entirely reverse scenario uh, over the last couple of years. And our grain here in northern Victoria, a lot of that has been going up north, V-doubles, road trains, even rail. A lot of rail out of South Australia has been going up into the Liverpool Plains, into the Darling Downs, going entirely reverse to how it ordinarily would we'd be normally heading it south. So the most expensive grain is around Griffith, which used to be the cheapest grain. So the whole thing's upside down. So um, that is going to be important as we get later on in the talk. Um, so the Victorian situation this year has been that um, we were actually deficit grain last year. Victoria took in about 100,000 tonnes of grain from SA and WA. This year, um, and we were a part of this big deficit of grain here, these are the net flows for, um, for grain into Victoria. This year we, uh, we took in, we, we, oops, we um, were actually, uh, this is the east coast, sorry, we were deficit still, um, only about 2 million tonnes, so a lot less grain coming around from the coast. But from a Victorian perspective, we exported about 2 million tonnes of grain up into Queensland and New South Wales in the last 12 months. So we've been a powerhouse for grain and feed production because the seasons, although it's been dry in the valley, overall, Victoria's done pretty damn well. Another graph, um, we've got, again, wheat prices in the blue again over the last 10 years. Uh, this time I've got barley in red and green being the difference. And uh, the take home here is that, and I don't know whether you can see that, but the barley price, rather the wheat price is becoming quite expensive relative to barley. So those two prices are pulling further apart. And um, if you're looking for a cheap food grain and you've been feeding wheat, it might be time to start switching around because your cheapest energy for your cow is probably going to be coming from barley. Onto the hay markets. Victoria is in fact the, an expanding area for hay, um, more so than WA and South Australia because a lot of the farmers there in South Australia and Western Australia don't have the domestic market. There's no second fiddle and they don't like being told and being dictated to and they feel a little bit trapped by the exporters there. So there's much more openness and opportunity, I think, in Victoria. And that's why you've seen more plants. <laughs> um, the colourful graph I have here shows my estimates of how much hay and silage we have grown in Victoria this year. These are the areas that we've got for the northern part of Victoria. Firstly, the top four years here, from 2014 to 2017, these numbers come from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, and the most two recent years, in the light blue and the orange here, are my estimates from my analysis. So, how much hay did we make this year in northern Victoria? Um, we, in this part of the world, 
we would be probably in this north central region and I'm estimating that we would have below average production in this part of the world because irrigators, you weren't splashing water around like you would love to, you weren't growing your hay and silage, you had a few paddocks of wheat that shut off a bit earlier and you were making a bit of cereal hay, maybe a bit of cereal silage, but overall you weren't making the hay you used to. Um, nothing like the cracking year, this is what the Australian Bureau of Statistics says, you nearly grew a million tonnes back in 2016. That was a record year. Um, a similar scene in other areas except for the Wimmera and Mallee. They had perfectly good wheat and barley crops that could have gone four tonnes to the hectare and they were cutting them for hay because they were going to make more money from hay. And they have. And they've already sold it. And it's been worth good money for them. And accordingly, that's actually meant that um, they're holding grain in storage and they're not pushed to sell because they're going to have a tax problem. But maybe watch out for July 1st. Um, getting down south now, I just wanted to get a bit of a, a change to see what's happening down south. Um, we've got the Karangamite area here, which is between, let's say, Geelong to Warrnambool. Uh, you've got the Glenelg Hopkins, which is southwest Victoria. East Gippsland, not doing very well this year. Their third failed spring in a row down there. Uh, and we've got West Gippsland. So overall, except for East Gippsland, they're having a ball down south. It's been a magnificent season. They cut their silage, they grazed, the dam grass still kept on growing, they cut hay. Uh, they've had a pretty good run. And um, they're not going to be looking for too much come winter and autumn. Don't expect too much competition if you're a, if you're wanting to buy hay because they'll be they're doing okay. Thank you very much. Here's my entry for the worst slide of the day award. Um, <coughs> it's got a lot of information here, um, but I want to tell you a couple of things. Overall supply for Victorian hay. This is all hay, all silage, straw, vetch, the whole shooting match. It's all in here. 4.2 million tonnes overall is a pretty respectable kind of volume of hay to start with at the start of the year. Second point I wanted to show you was normally Victoria would be taking in hay from the Riverina comes across into the Golden Valley. That's just the normal trade flows. And we would be a net importer of hay. This year, the last three years, of course, it's been going the other way. Huge exodus of hay on B doubles and road trains heading across the Murray. And still this season, even though it's been a relatively short stint up until now, it's been fast and furious. A lot of hay is going up north. The other thing I wanted to show you was this number, the last number down here. This is the stocks to use ratio. <coughs> how much hay are you going to have left at the end of the year compared to how much that you've been using? And it's a common indicator that is used in the grains market and can be applied to hay as well. So in the big year, in 2016, we carried over 100% of the hay that we'd normally use. An entire year's worth of hay kept on farm, and you would have seen it, couldn't sell the stuff. A lot of it in sheds. We had an entire year worth of hay kept on farm. This year, my prediction is we're getting down to 16% of the total use. And that's going to be, that's really quite tight. Um, and you want to be careful if you have a late break this season. Um, even though you know there's been rain in Queensland and there's good stocks down south, we don't have a lot to play with. You don't want anything to go wrong with the seasons before hay prices can spike again. They're, they're very temperamental. Um, beef culling has been massive in the north. The red line here is Queensland 
beef cattle. They dominate Australian uh, beef industry, obviously. I'm expecting a 20% culling rate over the last couple of years. They've all been taken into my into my numbers. Uh, the sheep flock, I know there's some wool growers in the room, um, and again, uh, it's all about New South Wales and the sheep game, and as far as Eastern Australia is concerned, and uh, some big declines there as well, 15 to 20% decline in sheep numbers in New South Wales are my prediction. But the MLA is forecasting the Australian flock to be the lowest since 1909, I understand. So sheep are doing well if you've got them. This is an idea of the, um, the road train network we now have in Victoria. Some of you might have seen this before. It's come in different stages, hence I've got the different colours here. But road train networks that now link uh, Charlton and, uh, and Horsham to the road train networks that are throughout New South Wales. This is an incredibly efficient system of extracting hay out of your state. <laughs> if you're on the buy, if you're on the sell side, it's a terrific pathway to get to those drought markets in the north. Um, so this is where I was saying before. This is um, all about hay stocks. This is the cereal hay price here delivered to the Golden Valley over the last 14 years we've got here. And these are the straw prices in red. And this line here refers to the stocks of hay that you have left over at the end of the year. And the thing to note here, when you have huge stocks of hay carried over, you have low price. And, uh, and, and it's the other way. As that stocks go down, prices go up. So this is where I'm expecting the stocks to be this year, down low. And so you make up your mind where that hay price might go, but I think it's not going to come down too much at all from where we are. Even though we've had good rains in the in the north and the, the phones have stopped ringing and there's not much hay going north, there's been um, an inquiry, inquiries coming through from dairy farmers now taking advantage of that lull in the buying opportunity because they're not confident there's going to be much hay left by the end of the season. The most vulnerable of the fodders that I think, it, and uh, if, you're, if you're a buyer of, um, of, of fodder, um, I would be looking at um, straw. Uh, there's been a lot of straw bailed quite recently in, in southern Victoria. They did get some away to in to Queensland and New South Wales. Uh, a lot of the grain growers down there have been very generous in offering that to the bushfire victims as well in the Upper Murray and East Gippsland. Um, there's a hell of a lot of it. And uh, they're terrified now because their main market in the drought has stopped. And dairy farms are clever. If, you can, if you've got a mixer wagon and a feed pad and you want cheap fibre, that is going to be the opportunity, I think, to, to um, get some cheap fibre for your cow. Okay, final little thing here. You're wanting to buy some hay. And I've got a fictitious dairy farm here at Kyabram. And I've got three different lots of hay that I'm considering buying. And these are prices taken from today's market. So they're quite real, these examples. I've got uh, one lot at Hopeton, Vetch Hay. Another lot at Dimboola. And I've got another lot of pasture hay at Lake Bolak. I'll put that in as a, a, a later option. Firstly, the Dimboola vetch hay, it's priced at 3.30 a tonne. There's its photo. It's stacked in the paddock. Its bales weigh 580 kilos, 12 protein, 6 energy, 48 protein at EDF. It's not really flash hay at all. It's had a tough time. I want to compare that with what I can buy from Hopeton. Old mate up at Hopen, he's got shedded vetch hay at 390. It's expensive. It's more than more than uh, more than the Dimbula stuff. You'd be probably lucky to buy that at 390 today, actually. Um, heavier bales, way better protein, 12 me, 32 NDF, quite low in protein, rocket fuel for your dairy cows. Just the sort of stuff you want. The third lot of hay is down at Lake Bolak. 
Who's ever bought hay in Lake Bollock before? Don't know much about it. It's pasture hay. $220 a tonne. Lighter weight bales at 580 kilos. Mid range, mid range protein at 15. 6 ME, 48 NDF. Not real flash in energy. But we can put that in the mix, include the freight, work out what's mean for your cows in terms of your cost of energy and your cost of protein for your dairy cows. And if you're a uh, if you're a, a hay seller, hay grower, you can sort of understand the concepts exactly. So what I've done is the three different lots of hay I've benchmarked against the Hopeton veg at 100% here, and the other two are relative to that Hopeton veg hay. Firstly, the X farm price, obviously De at 330 is cheaper and uh, the stuff like Bollock pasture hay at 220 way cheaper. By the time you get the lighter bales home, they've cost you a little bit more in freight. That's gone up a little bit. Your cost of energy um, compared to Hopeton, the cheaper stuff down at um, Dimboola is 20% more expensive in terms of your cost of energy because you've got way better um, energy density in your Houghton hay. And um, surprisingly, the energy cost of your pasture hay is level pegging with the stuff that you can get from Houghton. And in terms of protein, still that veg hay down at Dimboola is not real flash at all, 25% more expensive. Um, but surprisingly, the pasture hay you can buy at Lake Bolak today is costing you 10% less for your cost of protein. It's going to be, so this makes <coughs> buying hay from Lake Bolak look pretty damn positive compared to your veg hay from Hopeton, which is perhaps a more traditional place you would buy hay. So I guess this speaks to the point I was saying before that this whole market is upside down. So consider buying stuff you wouldn't ordinarily think about and maybe down south <laughs> Okay, within freight realms, you know, it might be worth considering. Um, so with the hay, the thing to watch out for is where are the tradable stocks going to be? We're going to have reasonable stocks of hay left at the end of the year, or it's going to be tight, but they'll be there. But where are they? If it's in the hands of dairy farmers in Western Victoria, they're not going to be selling it. They'll keep it themselves. So. The tradable hay in the Wimmera Mallee, I would argue, is, is already pretty low, and um, that's something just to, to watch out for. Um, finishing up on the energy costs, uh, this is speaking to the point I was saying before, barley, grain, and these are an indicative delivered prices today, um, barley is 10% cheaper on an energy basis compared to wheat. Uh, the next best option, uh, interestingly, is canola hay. If you can buy canola hay at 290, um, that's a uh, lot well, of that's coming out of New South Wales this year. And in terms of protein, canola meal rule, rules the roost. It's the benchmark <coughs> cheapest price for each unit of protein. Uh, the a lot of dairy farmers bought canola meal six months ago and they're probably their cost is only about four hundred dollars, four hundred and twenty. But that has run out now, you can't buy that, so that's the replacement cost. But even at that, canola meal is still the cheapest source of protein for cows. And um, again, the next best cheapest option according to these numbers is canola hay at a moderate fourteen percent protein. So the, there is a falling trend in, in grain prices now, um, but I think we're probably not far from the, um, the bottom. The hay prices are still trying to work out which way they're going. going. They're, they're dipping a little bit, but I would suggest to you if you need, need more hay for autumn and winter, that might be more of a buying opportunity than <coughs> watch that trend continue, because it won't continue forever. And yes, I reckon that light at the end of the tunnel is getting brighter and I think um, we should be uh, back here next year and um, 
our friends at Goulburn Murray Water will be telling us they expect 100% allocations opening. Is that right? Uh, yeah, let's hope so. Yeah, I'd so. love to get that message. <laughs> that is my talk. Thank you so much, Colin.